Hi, in this video we're going to be building a RAG agent with AWS Bedrock. So this retrieval augmented generation will be making use of the knowledge base and the knowledge base would consist of two PDFs. Uh, here is one uh, O'Reilly book on a data mesh idea and another one on Hadoop. So that's where the agent will be pulling the, the data from. And we'll package it all in a Streamlit app, which will look like this. So then we ask a question about the difference between data warehouse, data lake and Hadoop. It takes time to think and the response should contain references to the PDFs I showed you earlier. So there you go. This part was taken from the data mesh document and, and this one from Hadoop. Uh, we're not focusing on accuracy here. We really want to go like end to end, build an app locally so that in later videos we can kind of package and deploy it on AWS. Let's go. Okay, we'll start building our agent backwards. So we'll start with the knowledge base. In our case, the knowledge base would be an S3 bucket with two PDFs. Uh, they're both O'Reilly books, both on uh, <laughs> data architecture. Here is uh, the data mesh one, if we preview, it looks like this. It's not structured anyway, it's just a book the way you would see it in real life. And so there you go, the cover, early release, all of that. Same, same goes for the second book, Hadoop Application Architecture. So that's our S3 bucket. So just put two PDFs in there. Then we are in Bedrock tab we go to knowledge bases we create a knowledge base which is just a pointer um, to that s3 bucket it's important to give a description here why because that description will be used in the prompt of our agent uh, so we'll say that it contains books on data storage and management systems uh, systems and principles uh, you can use an existing rule you can create a new one i'll just create a new one next a uh, data source name just give a meaningful name Okay, now we'll select the S3 bucket, basically this S3 bucket. Uh, let's browse S3, that's our bucket. Take that, we're keeping everything at default, next. Okay, now we're picking a model that will do the, the chunking and the embeddings of our PDFs. I'll go with Cohere. I don't really like Amazon models that much. Okay, here also by default, we're creating this vector store, which is under the hood, a serverless Amazon open search cluster. Um, funny thing is, I don't think you can, once we create that, I don't think you can find that cluster in the console, but we'll double check that. I'm skipping all the, checkboxes here because we want to keep it simple and lean okay next uh, create knowledge base okay so now the knowledge base is successfully created one or more data sources haven't been synced so we click quickly sync that Okay, now the sync for our data source is complete and you can already test it out here. We we'll pick a model, I would recommend picking something that is good. So I would go for the Claude Sonnet. Now on the right hand side, you can already interact with the knowledge base. So basically ask questions towards your PDFs. So we have two PDFs, one on Hadoop, one on Data Mesh. I'll first try asking about difference between um, 
massive parallel processing system and Hadoop. Hopefully that would lead the search to the Hadoop book. Let's see, right? Hadoop architectures tells us the key, key difference, gives us the references from the text. Uh, and then I know that the data mesh book contains descriptions of different data storage and management kind of patterns. So I will ask something like, what is a data lake house? That's sort of as it might sound. Let's see if it goes to the data mesh book for this question. Data lake house, a new data architecture that combines key features of data lakes and data warehouses, etc. Okay, and it went to data mesh to answer this question. I'm happy. Awesome. On the agents tab, we'll click a create new agent, give it a somewhat meaningful name. So I'll do this retrieval augmented generation agent, create, brings you to this menu. Um, I'll just keep the default so that will create a new service role for our agent Then pick the foundation model. I would go for the latest Claude 3 model. Okay, you, you must enter the instructions. For the default settings, these instructions don't affect the agent behavior much, but instructions must be given. Uh, so we'll say something like answer users questions using the knowledge basis at your disposal. Okay. So you would need to save it first. I think it's just a bug, which will be fixed soon before you can proceed and add a knowledge base. So we'll pick the knowledge base we created earlier. Oh, there you go. That's where you need to enter an instruction. Um, okay. So um, contains books on various data storage and management architectures and patterns. Should do for now. Like, okay, we added knowledge base. We're not adding any action groups. Action group will be a Lambda function that extends the functionality of our agent. So far, we just want to very basic implementation. We're not implementing any guardrails. And this section, advanced prompts, you can edit the prompts, or like the chain of prompts that are being fired under the hood of the agent. So there is a pre processing step, there is an orchestration step, um, there is a response generation step, there is a post processing step. So all of those are internals, and we'll go into those later. For now, we keep it as is, save and exit. So we're keeping the default prompt and we're good. Save and exit. So now a funny button, you need to prepare it by just proactively clicking this prepare button, which I'll do right now. And then more waiting time. Okay. So the agent was successfully prepared. Now we need to create an alias. So that alias is like a snapshot of our agent because it will be constantly evolving, right? We might be changing knowledge bases, we might be changing prompts, uh, but this is a snapshot and that snapshot will be used for uh, deployment. I'll just call that as initial alias, create new version, throughput, on-demand throughput, default. Cool. So our agent is ready. We can test it here and it will work very similarly to the way we tested our knowledge base. So basically question answering. So now we are ready to package our agent into a Streamlit app. 
for the streamlit app code i'll be using this repository from anthony thank you so much anthony i'll post a link to the repo in the video description so he created a streamlit interface around a bedrock agent and he also took care of displaying the the references so if, if we were to ask what is a data lake it will, it will think and then it will produce an answer with references by the way these references are not displayed very well here no, actually they are okay so here are the references just says the the file name remember the knowledge base it would also show you that the chunk of text that it used to generate this so anthony made sure that those references are displayed in the streamlit ui now i cloned the repository already all i did is i added three environmental variables uh, as instructed by anthony so our bedrock agent id our bedrock agent alias id so those you can take from here if you go to your bedrock agent this is your bedrock agent id and this is your bedrock agent a alias id and just simply because of the way aws is set up on my machine i also specify the aws region now my environment already has the, the variables to to access the aws account which would then from which we'll, we'll call the, the bedrock agent Cool, so once all of that is done. Cool, so once all of this is done, I'll, I'll source the, this, this file with all this environmental variables, and then we'll run our Streamlit app locally. Slick minimalistic UI, I really like it. Thank you, Anthony let's test it out with a question what is a data warehouse takes time to think wow i like it so it used both books to answer the question beautiful so that's the first reference which comes from hadoop book Here's the second reference, comes from the data mesh book. Here's the UI built by uh, Anthony, that's all the intermediary steps. I guess we'll, we'll go into those in more details later. Citations, awesome. So that's how you build a bedrock agent app using Streamlit UI in like 10 minutes. I'll follow up with, uh, with the next steps around deploying this agent in ECS, and then improving the knowledge bases, adding more business logic on top. Stay tuned.